Das sind die auch mal bei. Mr. Speaker, sir, the selective and block redevelopment scheme at Amokyo Avenue 3, which I shall call Amokyo Sirs, is an epochal event in the history of our public housing. This event has important implications for all Singaporeans beyond the residents that are affected. But the media and government have downplayed these implications. Therefore, I'll be using my adjournment motion speech today to explain to Singaporeans why they should be concerned about Amokyo Sirs and how it will affect the future of their aging HDB flats. Some Singaporeans may not fully understand how and why Amokyo SERS is different from the other SERS exercises in the past. I will first explain briefly how Amokyo SERS is different from the past SERS. The key difference is this is the first time the residents selected for SERS must top up cash to get an equivalent replacement flat with a new 99-year lease. An equivalent flat is defined as one that is the same flat type, same size, and located at a designated site near the current site. I confirmed this during the deliberations of the Public Petitions Committee, where I persistently asked the Ministry for National Development, MND, for past examples of SERS where the residents had needed to top up cash for an equivalent flat with a new 99-year lease. The MND finally provided a memo to the Public Petitions Committee on November 14th, stating that in the previous SERS, at West Coast Road, residents who bought equivalent flats at the designated West Coast Crescent near their existing flats had received cash payment from the government for, of $51,000 for a three-room flat and $61,000 for a four-room flat, respectively. Only residents who opted for a more centrally located replacement site at Clementi Avenue 1 were required to top up cash. Thus, the government's example of West Coast Road SERS cannot be taken as an example of past SERS residents having to top up cash for an equivalent flat. This confirms that the Amokyo residents are the unlucky first SERS residents to be, to be financially burdened. For the first time, residents of a SERS must fork out cash for an equivalent flat with a new 99-year lease. The government has repeatedly stated it has used the same model and approach as other SERS to compute the comp compensation for the Amokyo SERS. But the government has not admitted that the outcome of the Amokyo SERS is different from other SERS. It is disingenuous of the government to have not admitted to the different outcome up to today, even though the outcome is undeniably different. 
If the outcome was not different, there would have been no need for the government to introduce the 50-year lease and the lease buyback scheme as a new option for the Amokil residents. Short of admitting the different outcome, Minister Desmond Lee had tried to give the reason for the different outcome in his response to Amokil member, Ms. Nadia Samdin's urgent motion speech in July 2022. The reason given is the least decay. The minister explained that in past SIRS, the flats were generally younger at the point of the SIRS announcement, with around 70 years of lease remaining. However, the flats affected by Amokil SIRS are older, with a lease balance of about 57 years. But the minister's explanation does not fully explain why the compensation given to the Amokil residents is insufficient for them to buy an equivalent flat with a new 99-year lease, like in other SIRS. He also did not explain why the residents affected by Marceline SIRS which was announced slightly later than the Amokil SIRS, did not need to top up cash, although the Marceline flats have a lease balance of only 58 to 59 years, which is not much longer than the 57 years remaining for the Amokil flats. In my opinion, the full explanation is that lease decay has affected prices of all HDB flats in matured estates more than the ones in non-matured estates. At the same time, the prices of new flats in matured estates have risen much faster because they enjoy the benefits of good amenities and location. Therefore, there is a larger price difference between the existing old flats at the new replacement flats in Amokyo than in Marsling. This is the key reason why the Amokyo residents have suffered a worse outcome than that of the residents of the Marsling SERS and previous SERS when the effect of lease decay had not set in. The government should have admitted to the different outcome and offer the full explanation to the Amokyo residents up front. But that is not to be. So what is the reason for the government to avoid admitting the different outcome and as a, as a result of that, unable to provide a full explanation to the Amokyo residents and Singaporeans? I think the reason is, by admitting to the different outcome, of the Amokyo SERS, it means the Voluntary Early Redevelopment Scheme, or VERS, is not a viable solution to the lease decay problem. Since 2018, the government, however, has touted VERS as a solution to the lease decay problem. Singaporeans are expecting VERS to be like SERS for all. But it is a different story if VERS is actually Amokyo SERS for all. The original SERS means residents get paid. Amokyo SERS means residents must pay. Since the market-based compensation formula that the government had used for SERS all this while has failed to enable Amokyo residents to exchange their 42-year-old flats for new ones without having to top up cash, VERS cannot be a solution to the lease decay problem, as the flats under VERS will be even older at more than 70 years old. This was especially true if the price disparity between new and older flats in mature estates which we see today 
continues to persist. If the government uses the same formula as SERS to compensate verse residents, it is certain that the verse resident will have to pay a lot more cash or move to a cheaper area with the proceeds from verse. The likelihood of any verse proposal being approved will also be nil because Singaporeans have come to associate and block with windfalls and new homes. And the, new, and the redevelopment of mature estates envisioned by verse will not materialize. Verse will be doomed if the government uses the same compensation formula as Amokyo serves. By not admitting to the different outcome of the Amokyo serves and the financial plight of the Amokyo residents, the government continues to keep silent on the non viability of verse. The right thing to do, however, is to clarify to Singaporeans whether it would be devising a new compensation formula for verse or proposing some other solutions for the lease decay problem, which has serious implica implications on the financial well-being and retirement plans of Singaporeans, especially those who bought older flats in matured estates before the lease decay issue was thrown into the spotlight. Mr. Speaker, the government has shown a lack of transparency and compassion by offering a compensation package that requires top-up to the Amokyo residents in April 2022 without explaining the reasons for it. Even though the government has followed the same model and approach as a government responsible to the people, it should have thought through the implications of the different compensation and come out with more palatable solutions beforehand. The government has failed to appreciate how stressful and unfair it is to the Amokyo residents. For them to fork out tens of thousands of dollars to move to a new location forced upon them by national development needs. I urge the government to further improve the compensation package for the Amokyo residents, although a final compensation has been announced on November 7th last year. Fifty years after the introduction of the Land Acquisition Act, it is time for us to reassess the Act with regards to its power to displace Singaporeans from their homes without adequate compensation for them to afford an equivalent replacement home in the same area. Had the Amokyo Sirs residents not protested, this issue would not have been drawn into the national spotlight, and we would not be able to assess its implications for Sirs in future. Singaporeans, especially those who live in older flats with decaying leases, should be aware that Amokyo serves possibly for shadows what could happen to them in the future if the government uses the compensation formula applied to Amokyo serves for verse in future. We urge the government to clarify how it intends to compensate residents of, Sir, of verse in future because Singaporeans need certainty on the least decay issue as soon as possible. Singaporeans deserve better for country, for people. Thank you. As a messy man.
Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Leong has raised the issue of the Ang Mokyo Sirs by submitting a petition to the Public Petitions Committee and the Ministry of National Development as well as the Housing Development Board has replied to the issues that he has raised and have also sent memoranda to the Public Petitions Committee several times. He has raised some issues uh, again and I would like to take this opportunity to recap what has transpired in the case of the Ang Mokyo Sirs. First of all, Sirs compensation has never been intentionally pegged to the price of a new flat of similar size in a similar location on a fresh 99-year lease. It has not been pegged or designed this way, although in his speech, Mr. Leong has sought to make it so. How does it come about that a flat that has, say, 70 years left on its lease can be worth more than a similar flat in terms of size and location with a full 99 years to run? This is largely because the new flat on a 99-year lease comes with government subsidies which are so substantive that after netting off some additional financial support from the SERS grant and the payment of reasonable expenses by HDB, eligible buyers can actually pay less than what a similar flat with 70 years left would fetch on the resale market. During earlier SERS exercises, the flats that were acquired were generally younger, such that most unit owners would be able to afford a subsidised replacement flat of similar attributes on a fresh 99-year lease. The compensation framework was based on independent assessment, which in turn was based on market value. It was not pegged to the subsidised price of new flats, nor designed to create a windfall. It so happened, during past SERS exercises, that the outcome was quite advantageous for most flat owners, because the age of their flats was not so old. A different outcome would occur if the age of the flats involved in SERS were older, because a flat with, say, 57 years left would fetch a lower value on the resale market than one with 70 years left. And this was what happened in the case of the Ang Mokyo SERS exercise, and would, in fact, be the case in future SERS exercises if the flats involved are of similar vintage. What did government do in this case? First, the government has maintained consistency in our approach with previous exercises. This is quite in contrast with a picture that Mr. Leong was trying to paint, which is that somehow an epochal moment was made possible without the government admitting so. I'm afraid Mr. Leong is painting quite an incorrect picture here. In addition, the government also listened to the residents and once we heard their key concerns, we introduced flexibility to meet their needs by offering more options, such as 50-year leases, as well as the lease buyback scheme for seniors and allowing flexibility for the residents to apply for a site that is different than the original designated replacement site at Central Weave at Ang Mokyo. So we reject the characterization of lack of empathy. We have been walking the ground and we have also been listening to residents. While we have maintained our approach towards the valuation of flats, we have also introduced flexibility after listening from the residents and also the representations of their representative, Ms. Nadia Samdin. And as a result of that, 99% that of flat owners need not top up to purchase a similar type flat with a full 99-year lease or a similar sized flat on a 50-year lease. I feel that we need to repeat this. 99% of the flat owners who are involved in the Ang Mokyo SERS exercise do not need to top up to purchase a similar type flat with a full 99-year lease or a similar-sized flat 
on a 50-year lease. So the government, in determining the compensation for SIRS flats, has been consistent in applying valuation principles that are well established. In addition, we have been giving our SIRS households considerable support. All these have been enumerated in our public communications, and I feel that it is not necessary for us to repeat that here. Mr. Leong then goes on to characterize what has happened in the Ang Mo Kyo SIRS case as one that is due to an effect of diminishing leases and then to use that to shape certain expectations of the public of the VERS scheme. And I feel that it is important for us to make very clear here. I've explained why residents need to top up when they swap a 57-year lease for a new 99-year lease. And this was also made clear during our public communications with our residents in Ang Mo Kyo, but as well as in response to the public petition. And I believe Mr. Leong acknowledges that. However, it seems that he does not prefer this outcome. That does not make it an unfair one. SIRS is not meant to extend a decaying lease for free to 99 years. I've mentioned that. That's not the basis upon which SIRS compensation is determined. Mm -hmm. It's determined by fair, independent assessment, and that in turn takes reference from market value. Nor is VERSE. VERSE, like SIRS, is not meant to extend a diminishing lease for free to 99 years. The alternative to SIRS or VERSE is for the residents to stay in place until their lease run out, at which point they would have to find a new flat on a new lease. So I believe what Mr. Leong is doing here is to shape certain ungrounded expectations of the verse scheme, which are at odds with what we have shared so far. The details of verse have yet to be announced, but the government has already made clear that the terms for VERS will not be as generous as for SIRS and that there are no replacement flats. So I think if you examine what Mr. Leong has been doing, I think he has been reshaping people's expectations of the scheme and I cannot help but wonder why he's doing so. Be that as it may, it doesn't seem very inconsistent with what Mr. Leong has been doing because, as I have explained, the SIR scheme was not designed, the compensation was not designed for flat owners to be able to purchase a same size flat on a fresh 99 year lease in a very similar location, but Mr. Leong has painted it as the objective, and in his speech, he characterizes what has happened in Ang Mo Kyo as some threshold having, having been crossed. And I think what Mr. Leong is doing here is blurring the distinction between a market expectation and a policy commitment. Now, we can understand in the case of SIRS that residents or flat owners may hope for more compensation. We can understand if they've formed these expectations based on the experiences of previous flat owners who have gone through the SIRS exercises. But this cannot be the case for all SIRS exercises, and we have explained that. So I think that far from the government being disingenuous, far from the government having been non-transparent or non-empathetic to ground concerns, I would put it, Mr. Speaker, to the House that it is Mr. Leong who is being disingenuous in blurring the distinction between a market expectation and a policy commitment and also shaping expectations of a policy whose parameters we have given some outline to, but he's shaped it the other way and I 
can only wonder at his purpose for doing this, Mr. Speaker. Now, I am mindful that Mr. Leong has been making various arguments, in our opinion, erroneous arguments outside of the House with regards to the valuation and the pricing of BTO flats and also, by extension, the proper use of national reserves. And I also believe that we will have an opportunity to debate fully in this House on these matters. But I hope that instead of conflating issues, confusing issues, or quite deliberately misleading the public by shaping ungrounded expectations of schemes, creating goalposts, as it were, I hope that Mr. Leong will engage in the upcoming debate responsibly. To do otherwise makes it harder, not easier, for us collectively to balance the needs of Singaporeans, and I'm talking about the current generation as well as the future generations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Leong. Speaker, I thank the uh, SMS for responding to my speech. However, I think, contrary to what the SMS has said, I think the government actually has shaped certain expectations in our society already. I'm not the one who is reshaping the expectations. For example, sirs, all the past sirs, the residents have received cash and get an equivalent flat and with a 99-year lease. Isn't that an expectation cultivated by the government? Am I reshaping expectations? I'm just saying the Amokyo Sir's residents have a totally different package. And government, please admit to it. That is the first communication that you have to be frank with the Amokyo residents. And I'm not necessarily. So I would like the, um, um, the SMS to clarify. In spite of, I mean, even after I have uh, shared the reasons why I think the Amokyo SERS package is totally different from the packages of the past SERS, do, does she still think that that is a wrong claim? That's my first question. The second question is, does she think, again, the expectation on the verse is not my shaping the expectations in our society. The government has given the expectation, first of all, that HDB flat is an appreciating asset. And now there's a lease decay. And Mr. Leong, can you click the, the clarification decay, succinct, please, so yes, that we can have a response? Yes, and the lease decay, the government has suggested the verbs. So the government has shaped the expectation. Am I now, I'm asking the question. So even with, all, with this Amokyo Sir's uh, 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 incident, which points to the fact that the compensation will be very different. Of course, the guidelines of the verse have not been totally clear and uh, announced at the moment. But do the, uh, does the SMS things agree that if we draw an analogy okay, of the verse with the Amokyo Sirs, then the verse compensation will not be attractive to the Singaporeans. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Leong says that it is the government who has been shaping certain expectations of sirs in the way that he has characterised it. Mr. Speaker, I would like to share with Mr. Leong once again actually what government has been putting out with regards to sirs. We have said more than once that the selection of sites for SERS necessarily has to be limited and that only about 5% of sites could be suitable for SERS and that, in fact, many suitable sites have already gone through the exercise. So how have we not been shaping the expectations and putting out information in a transparent way. 
So, Mr. Speaker, I think that what Mr. Leong is trying to do is once again to confuse the public, and I believe that the information that we have been putting out is transparent, and we also have been consistent in doing so. With regards to diminishing leases, again, the government has also been upfront in letting residents know about this, in being clear to homeowners. In terms of the relativity between VERS and SERS, if Mr. Leong takes a look at our factually article on gov.sg, I think it cannot possibly be clearer. So, Mr. Speaker, I think what Mr. Leong is trying to do here is something that is uh, increasingly evident to everyone. Order. Time allowed for the proceedings has expired. I adjourn the House pursuant to the standing order. Order. Order.